What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. And um, we have some news out of the NFL. We know that one week from today, the Dallas Cowboys will be going to Oxnard to start training camp. We know that training camps are beginning to open uh, across the NFL, and football is literally here, and soon we'll be talking about... As we sitting here, i supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. Yeah, we'll be talking about practice. In the meantime, there's still some unfinished business. In fact, with the Dallas Cowboys, there's a lot of unfinished business that has to be taken care of. And one of those things is dealing with the contracts. Now, here's where it's interesting. Yesterday was the last day to negotiate contracts for players that were on a franchise tag. So T. Higgins did not get a contract extension. He is playing this year on that $21 million uh, franchise tag, in which case he'll be a free agent next year, unless they decide to franchise tag him a second year, in which case the price will go up an additional 30%, and I doubt that they'll do that. No, I, I, I don't think anybody's done that except the Cowboys tried that with Dak. But in D-Law, because the Cowboys, of course, that's the way they roll. Also, we have Brandon Ayuk officially requesting a trade. It seems like the well is now poisoned with him. Uh, allegedly, they had been some meetings recently, but a I guess they have not gone the way that he wanted them to go, and he is requesting a trade. There's been so much drama with this situation where he has literally been um, talking and putting it out there that they don't love me, they don't want me back, and this, that, and the other, and so on. And it sounds like he's just done. He is checked out, and the well is poison. And this is the game that the Cowboys are kind of playing right now with C.D. Lamb. The question will be is, well, C.D. Lamb, is this going to poison the well to the point where C.D. just says, you know what, my, mom, my, my, my mama said, my mama said I need to get out of Dallas with Dak Prescott and everything else, and that he decides I want to get up out of here. Um, I don't know. But, again, this is the game that they're playing. Now, the Cowboys, honestly, don't have to do anything. They could go ahead and just say, you know what, you got a contract, you're playing on your fifth-year option, and we're going to franchise tag you like they did, uh, Cincinnati did with T. Higgins. And there's nothing you can do. You can't go you, – you can be a distraction. You can be a jackass. You cannot talk to him and everything else. You cannot show up, but you can't ever leave. It's like the Hotel California. They check in, but you just can't leave until they allow you to. So we'll see what happens there. But let's actually listen to the first take this morning. Now, you know, Skip Bayless, days are numbered on Undisputed. Um, but let's listen to the first take as they're talking about the situation with Brandon Ayuk. Training camps are getting underway in the NFL, and first take is going camping as we dive into the biggest storylines heading into the season. Today we're looking at the 49ers. Brandon Ayuk has been a topic of conversation all offseason in San Francisco. The wide receiver is looking for a new contract with the team, but has yet to get a deal done, which has resulted in him missing the 49ers offseason program. Let's listen to his teammate, George Kittle. I'm not concerned about it. Ayuk's a phenomenal football player who's a big part of our offense. And he's like one of the most complete receivers that like, I've ever played with. So I'm going to assume that Ayuk's going to be on our team by, by the time the season starts. Dan Olofsky, uh, do you think the 49ers need Ayuk to remain on top of the NFC? Oh, there's no question about it. Brandon is their, one of the most essential offensive pieces that they have. He's much more than a wide receiver as well. I, I, you can make the case he's the best blocking wide receiver in the NFL, and the way that San Francisco runs the football and the way that they formation stuff and the way their offense in many ways is built in yards after the catch, if you don't have a guy that selflessly does that work outside of actually catching the football, then it's really difficult to operate. Also, I don't know if there's a more confident guy is it? going over the middle of the field and taking shots potentially than Brandon Ayuk at wide receiver. Maybe Justin Jefferson, but Brock Purdy has a tremendous amount of trust in him. And he is a very unique skill set when it comes to how San Francisco runs to run their offense. So he is a much-needed piece to stay atop the NFC. Uh, I, again, I disagree. Tyree Kill left Kansas City. They won two Super Bowls. Tyree Kill has not won a playoff game yet in Miami. 
Devontae Adams left Green Bay. Everybody thought the worst thing in the world. Packers won a playoff game last year, and Adams has done nothing mm -hmm. from a standpoint of postseason uh, with the Raiders. I like Ayuk. He's a very good player. I got confidence in the quarterback, who Dan, by the way, five minutes ago, wanted to put in the Hall of Fame in Brock Birdie. <laughs> and I got a lot of confidence in the head coach, who obviously is a big-time coach. And remember, the best 49ers team hmm. of all time did not have Jerry Rice on it. His receivers were Freddie Solomon and Joe Montana, 84, 15-1. His receivers were Freddie Solomon and Dwight Clark. Those are not Hall of Fame. 40 years ago, Matt Oh, well, uh, it's one of the great teams. You're not gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna dispute the 84 Niners. They were 15 and one. That was those were who their receivers were. Dwight and uh, Dwight Clark, God rest his soul, not a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. And obviously, okay. the, the, Fred Solomon, another God rest his soul, not a Hall of Famer either. So receivers have a little bit of a dime or dozen, uh, you know, dime or dozen Interesting routine take. to them. You can replace them. So I think the Niners, they need them, but I don't think the end of the world if they don't have them. Myself. Well, no, not the end of the world, but they're not. The, they, they're if, not if the Brandon same team. If was traded okay. today, they would. I would give you two or three teams that I would then slot yes. above San Francisco when it comes to favorites in the NFC. Agreed. I wouldn't even have them favorites in their division then if they lost Ayuk and didn't replace them. I would probably pick the Rams over them within the division. Wow. I think he's that versatile of a piece for them. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, then what would be your explanation about Green Bay losing Adams? We all thought the world would end for the Packers at receivers. They made the playoffs, of course, last year, won a playoff game, and the Raiders have done nothing. And what would be your explanation of Hill, who has not won a playoff game in Miami, and the Chiefs have won two Super Bowls with Adams? Okay. There. One, they, they have got two all-time greats in Kansas City at respective positions. Travis Kelsey, arguably the best tight end right. of all time, and Patrick Mahomes, arguably the right. best quarterback of all time. So right. it softens the blow a little bit. They also had a defense last year that gave up like 14 points a game. So right. roster-wise was fantastic. In relation to Green Bay, don't forget, they traded Devontae Adams, and their offense fell apart the next season. True and on that in one. many ways was the beginning of the end for Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Well, week 17, they had a chance to make the playoffs before the loss to Detroit. And San Francisco still has McCaffrey, still has Trent Williams, still has Kittle. They still got D.B. Samuel. So it's not like there's nothing there. Correct. He left. So, listen, I'm I got something to add to that. The fact that Ayuk's a very good player, you know sure. more the X's and O's and the blocks. Of course. But of course. I have seen too many examples where we all thought with these receivers, when they leave, these teams are never going to respond. And every time I look up, a team does very nicely when they don't pay the receiver $2 billion and they replace him, drafting, whatever the case might be, sure. and they don't seem to miss a beat. That's the evidence that we've seen in the last Yeah, I, 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 I know that you're not minimizing I the type what of you're player saying, bro. I don't want to come across in that regards. I just think th there's a little nuance to this one. I think Ayuk and the role that he plays and what he's asked to do in San Francisco is a little bit different than the role that I'm trying to think of another like relatively high-end receiver. Okay, here's what I'm going to say because, you know, th there, there is a lot to be said about wide receivers um, not winning, number one, as in best wide receivers winning Super Bowls. Um, we've seen Tariq Hill go to Miami. It didn't lead to them getting a Super Bowl. DeMonte Adams going to the Raiders didn't lead to them getting a Super Bowl. Now, again, you can't really look at Kansas City and say that they fell apart without Tariq Hill because they still have the best quarterback on the planet and one of the best offensive minds. So the, it's hard to compare apples to oranges there. But in the grand scheme of things, you see top tight ends being in Super Bowls, not necessarily top wide receivers. And this is the question you have to ask. But on the flip side of this, when Debo Samuels was out, when Debo Samuels went out, I believe that San Francisco lost three games in a row I'm just saying this may be a case where you get a whole lot more bang for your buck because of what you get from Brandon Ayuk he's a speed guy he gets uh, separation he's down the field and everything else he's helping to stretch the field and making everybody else better and that's one of the things that people don't seem to understand is sometimes a guy is great not only with his numbers, but what he does for everybody else. And I don't know that Brock Purdy is the same guy without Brandon Ayuk. And I don't know that Dak Prescott is the same guy without C.D. Lamb, per se, as well. It's one of those things is, is C.D. Lamb the same guy without Dak Prescott? There's only one way we're going to find out. 
And that's when he goes someplace else. All right, good people. That's all I got for you right now. I hope you all are having a great day. Got some more work to do out here because, you know, it's hard out here for a pimp. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out.